What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this amazing interior design uh, element. So this is quite cool, this whole warped wall thing and uh, I've seen it in a lot of cafes, it's quite popular now and it's like this uh, wall uh, element but it's also uh, like a seating area so it works both as just some sort of a uh, artistic uh, design element and as a functional seat. Of course it's extremely uncomfortable to sit in that, but anyway it looks good. But before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. Okay so let's get started. So here I am in Revit and for this project I'm going to be using the architectural template. And first, let's make a room in which we're going to be placing this uh, whole uh, wall. So just go to wall, go with rectangle, and just create a simple rectangle like that. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Okay, so once we have something like this, let's give it a floor. So I'm just going to give it a simple rectangle like this. Maybe attach this here. Okay, finish it off, go to cut. Paste, align to selected levels, level 2, hit OK, uh, go into 3D, so this is what we get. So now I'm just going to select all of the walls and attach top base to this here uh, panel. And also uh, I'm just going to change the level height, so go to south elevation. And here from 4000 millimeters, I'm just going to change it to 3000 millimeters, because I don't think it's necessary to have uh, this that tall. And let's change these uh, floors, it's 400 millimeter, I think that's way too large, so let's uh, let's use maybe, yeah, let's use this 220. Okay, so once we have this covered, we've got the walls, we've got the ceiling, let's go back into level 1 and just to allow a bit of light to enter this thing, let's change this to some curtain wall, so let's go with storefront. Okay, so once this is changed to storefront, uh, maybe attach this to that, this to that, Okay, so once we have this, we can place our wall perhaps on this side. I guess that that would work, at least for me. Okay, so how do you do this? Well, uh, there's really the best option is to use in place mass. So just go here to masking in sight and you go to uh, in place mass. But before that, I like to turn mass on. So you just go in place mass. You can call it mass one, it doesn't really matter. And now we can start uh, placing this element. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some reference planes uh, to help us orient in space. So for that, let's just go to here to reference plane and let's just place one here on this wall. Then let's, uh, oops, make sure that they're all parallel. So do one like that, one over here, one over here, and perhaps one over here. Okay, and let's say our bench area is going to be between these two. Okay, so once we have these, uh, let's just give them names and let's just attach this to that, okay? And this one will be reference plane number one, this will be reference plane number two, this one will be number three, this one is number four, and the last one, yeah, you guessed it, it's number five. Now once we have these reference planes all in place, now we can start modeling our shape. So for that I suggest you go to south elevation, so you're looking at it from the bottom. So you go south elevation, okay, now you're here. Now because you can't see through walls, I suggest you turn on uh, this wireframe option and now, well, now you can see through walls. And let's start modeling. So you're going to be using model lines for this and for work planes, first let's set this to reference plane one and now we can start modeling. So, uh, and also make sure that you check uh, draw on work plane. If you keep this uh, draw on face, it's going to mess it up because whenever you come close to any element, it's going to pick that element in space as your work plane and this is just not going to be in the right place. So, of course, just make sure draw on work plane is selected and then you can start modeling. So I'm just going to use lines. So just go like this, one line, go down, go like this, and then I'm just going to uh, switch to spline through points and go to, from the bottom, okay, from there, and then do something like that. Okay, so here's the problem. So it switched back to draw on face and now we've got this whole mess and we can't fix it, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this 
and go back to spline through points, make sure we're on reference plane one, go on draw on work plane, and then go ahead and repeat that process. Okay, and as you can see now, it looks a lot better. Okay, and finish it off over here. Okay, so now if we select everything, we can select this thing and this thing, and now if we go in space, uh, if you can't see it again, go to wireframe, and there you go. So this is our first profile. Okay, so now let's move on to the second profile. So go back into your uh, south elevation. Now you go again to model line, make sure draw on work plane is selected, make sure you select reference plane number two, and then you start modeling again. So you go from here, like that, all the way to the bottom, go like that, and then you can go to spline through points from that point on, and then just kind of go like that. I don't know, maybe like this. Okay, I guess this looks fine. Now go into 3D again, just double check what that looks like. And if we go into level one for a second, you can see, okay, so the next one is the beginning of our bench area. And uh, the one after that is also our bench area. So we need to make sure that those have that uh, seat in place. So let's go back into South Elevation, go into Model Line, Normal Line, Draw on Workplace, Reference Plane number three, and let's get started. So just go again, you start from the top, or you can start from the bottom, it doesn't really matter. So you go kind of like that, and now you switch to your spline through points. You go from there, uh, but instead of like what you were doing so far, you go maybe something like this. So you create that little seating area and maybe it's, it's going to take a bit more of these reference lines to kind of get the accurate shape of the seat. But go kind of like that. And then you can go crazy towards the, uh, the top. So maybe something like this. Go into 3D just to double check all of the connections. Yeah, that looks that looks nice. Okay, so now you go back into your south elevation and we need to do one more that looks similar to this one. So again, uh, you go to model line, a line, draw on work plane and you select number four. And again, you start from the top, maybe like this. Go all the way to the bottom. And also you start from like a similar spot, you switch to spline through points, and then you go, you do the same thing. So maybe go like this. And I suggest you follow this as closely as possible. So you're, you're going to have a comfortable seating area. So kind of like that. And make sure to follow it upward. And now here again, you can go as, as wild as you want because we're above the seating area. So maybe something like that. Okay, so once we have this one, go back into 3D, just to double check what that looks like. Okay, it seems to be, uh, it looks quite all right. So now we just need to finish off one more over here. So go back into your uh, south elevation. And again, you go to uh, model line, align, uh, draw on work plane, uh, pick plane number five, and then let's just go crazy like this and go to there and go like that. And then you go spline through points and you just do whatever you want. You finish off your shape as crazy and wild as you want. Okay, so now we've got these uh, kind of shapes in place. Now we can select all of them and go create form. And it doesn't work for some reason, so you need to double check why isn't it working. There's probably a wrong connection somewhere between these lines, so let's see. Where is that? Okay, this looks all right. The bottom ones look all right. Yeah, this looks fine. Yeah, these all seem to be fine. So maybe the problem is it uh, just can't do it all at once. So I, su I suggest you select like this uh, two of them and then go create form. And then you select that whole form and then you just add this one Go create form. Okay, it won't do it. So maybe just go like this. Create form. Okay, there you go. So it's starting. 
So you just have to figure it out. Uh, unfortunately, with the massing in Revit, it's always kind of a different approach and you have to figure out each problem, how to approach it. So here we go, it's working now. So let's just finish it off over here. So you just select the last face and this whole thing and you go create form and there you go. Okay, so there's our seating area, but you're probably thinking, but wait, it should, shouldn't it be like uh, ribbed from like ribs? <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but you get a point. So let's just go to this. This is west elevation, if I'm not mistaken. West. Yeah. Okay, so again, let's switch this to wireframe. And now when we're looking at it, uh, you can see this is just a simple mass, but we need to add some voids. So for, for voids, vo voids, uh, just go to this one. And then for picking a plane, well, we need to create a plane for that. So just go here and go maybe reference plane and do it on this wall. Okay. And those were one, two, three. Let's just call this one A, just to distinguish it from the rest and go back into your west, west elevation. Go to set work plane, set it by name to work plane A, and then just go rectangle and create a rectangle like so. Okay, so once you have this rectangle, uh, you can go into 3D and find it, go create form, void form, uh, spin it to the other side, and there you go, so you've got your void form. Now you need to select this uh, void form, go back into your west elevation, and let's see, can we use array? Unfortunately, Revit doesn't allow us to do that. So let's just go with copy. So CO for copy. And let's go kind of like that. Let's see what we get. Okay, so here we've got some basic uh, distance for copying. So let's go copy again. Uh, go make sure that multiple is selected over here. And then you just do a few, maybe like six or seven, I don't know. And then uh, you go again and you select these voids. Oops. So you just tab through, select it. Then you need to again <laughs> click tab a few times. Select this one, select this one, select this one. And you go all the way around, selecting all of them. And now you go again, CO, copy. This is just going to speed up the whole copying process. So you copy to there, copy forward. Okay, there we go, it's going fast now. And here it doesn't seem to be cutting, but don't worry, we're going to fi uh, fix that a bit later on. So it's it's cutting some of them, but here we have some problems, but we're going to address those a bit later. So just go cut all the way through, all the way to the other side, just to create the whole ribbed uh, effect. Okay, you're almost done. Just a few more or a couple more. And there you go. It's almost done. Come on. Okay. Uh, now let's just go into 3D. And here uh, you need to cut these. Now just go to cut geometry. You select this thing, you select this thing. And maybe we can go multiple cut. So select this one and... Okay, for some reason it doesn't respond to the multiple cut, but it works like this. So I guess that's what we're going to be using. So you go like that. I know it's a, it's a bit manual job, but it gets the job done. So you select this thing, come on. Okay, it's really annoying when you have to do something manually in Revit, but you get the point. So let's let's just finish this off. Come on, just a few more. Okay, this looks all right. Okay, but you get the point. Here's the the general seating area. Okay, so now to add the material, uh, I just need to select this whole thing. And then you need to select the second one. You just hold the control to add to selection. Select this one and select this one. And here for the material, go in here and you choose the material that you want. In these cafes, it's usually some uh, wood material. So I'm just going to do wood and let's use birch wood. That's the one I like. It's usually got good graphics in Revit 2019. So that's why I like to use it. So just go finish mass, 
uh, delete the elements that we don't need. Those are these voids. Of course, you would uh, finish them if you were working. I'm just uh, trying to save a bit of time for this tutorial. Okay, and just to see it, how it looks in space, I just create a camera. Let's do a camera angle like this. And there you go, it looks really cool. So let's turn on the to realistic. Wow, that I'm actually quite happy with how this turned out. And of course you can create a rendering, just double R, render, and then you're going to get this amazing looking uh, and extremely uncomfortable chair. Of course we can't see it because uh, adjust uh, exposure is all wrong. So let's go to bright. Yeah, there you go. So this looks really cool. So there you go. That's how you create these cool interior design uh, elements that are incredibly uncomfortable for seating. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you want to download this project file, check out my Patreon first link in the description for only $5 a month. You can get access to all of my project files, over 160 files so far. So make sure to check that out. Okay, so that's it from me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.